Starfield is the newest game from Bethesda, and has been one of the most highly anticipated games since its reveal in 2018. This is Bethesda's first entirely single-player game since Fallout 4 in 2015, and the first that they've developed under Microsoft. Using their newly updated Creation Engine 2, this game features vast landscapes and planets for players to explore, as well as new additions such as improved volumetric lighting and real-time global illumination. Unfortunately, these changes have bumped up the system requirements significantly from Fallout 4, to the point where the recommended GPU for that game won't even launch Starfield. So we decided to give it a run on a wide variety of video cards to paint a broad picture of performance on different hardware. Thankfully, this game does still feature Bethesda staples, such as multiple save states that made accurately benchmarking it a breeze. For testing, we chose the Ryzen 5 5600X and paired it with 32GB of 3200MHz DDR4. The only overclocking that was done was enabling XMP for the memory, PBO for the CPU, and setting the NVIDIA control panel to prefer maximum performance. The game was stored on a SanDisk Ultra SATA SSD. On screen now are the exact models of all the graphics cards we used, which we will simply refer to as their generic name from here on out. All of these cards were adequately cooled and able to boost under normal conditions. For the game itself, our testing methodology features two different areas of the game, in the heart of the big city of New Atlantis and exploring the wilderness on Jameson. For the end results, we took an average of five passes of each card at each setting to accurately convey gameplay performance. For all the settings, it is worth noting that we disabled motion blur, film grain, depth of field, variable rate shading, and dynamic resolution. We also disabled FSR2 except where noted. Bearing those changes in mind, we wanted to see what performance scaling was like between all the presets. For these tests, we used the RTX 3080 since it's representative of a system this game was designed for, and because it's much more popular than the otherwise excellent 6900 XT according to the Steam hardware survey. The first thing we noticed was how visually different the graphics presets are from one another. There's a big jump visually from one to the next. Exploring the wilderness of Jameson at 4K, the average FPS goes from 29.7 FPS average on Ultra to 48.1 FPS average at low. The 1% lows experience similar scaling, going from 24.7 FPS on Ultra to 41.3 FPS on Low. However, the scaling between the 0.1% lows is rather different, going from 23 FPS average on Ultra to a lower 22.3 FPS average on Low. This does change in New Atlantis at 4K, where the average FPS scaling is also rather high, going from 29.5 FPS average on Ultra to 46.1 FPS average on Low. However, unlike Jemison, we did experience significant improvement in 0.1% lows from 22.6 FPS to 29.2. We believe this is because the game's 0.1% lows are CPU bound, and on Jemison, there are relatively few NPCs compared to the heavy population density in New Atlantis, which is reduced as we lower the crowd density setting under the preset. This is something to keep in mind for future charts where we'll test 1080p low and 1080p, 1440p, and 4K all on high. Since we won't be using it going forward, we did still want to see how FSR2 impacts performance. For this, we decided to use both the RTX 3080 as well as the GTX 1080 Ti. We ran the game at 50% render resolution with 100% sharpening, all on high settings. On New Atlantis, we noticed once again this area is significantly CPU bound with our RTX 3080, with very little performance gains going from 4K to 1080p, with the highest performance actually at 1440p thanks to the imbalance of CPU and GPU scaling at the other resolutions. However, this all changes with the 1080 Ti, where there are noticeable and significant gains going from 4K to 1080p from 27.2 FPS average to 37.8, and similar scaling of the 1% and 0.1% lows, giving the 1080 Ti a consistent 30 FPS in this area. Moving on to Jemison Wilderness, we see greatly different results once again from the densely populated city, with both the 1080 Ti and 3080 experiencing significant uplifts from dropping the resolution. However, even in this area, we run into what appear to be CPU performance limitations, with a massive delta between average and 0.1% low frame rates. Now that we're through FSR2, let's get on to testing at native resolutions. Starting off at 4K high in New Atlantis, we see a clear victory for the 6900 XT over the 3080, averaging 45.8 FPS average compared to the 3080's 34.5, and that 10 FPS difference scales nearly perfectly with the 1% and 0.1% lows. This breaks the trend of New Atlantis being CPU limited since we're at such a high resolution. Moving down the chart, the 2080 Super ekes out about a 20% improvement from the 1080 Ti, but both are unplayable in this area at 4K. The same goes for the 980 Ti and 1070, do not try to play 4K with anything lower than a 3080. In the Jemison Wilderness, the results are similar across the board, with only the 6900 XT managing over 30 FPS in the 0.1% lows. Moving down to 1440 high, on Jemison, we're noticing about a 50% improvement in average FPS for the RTX 3080 and 6900 XT, but both of those cards also experience 5-10% lower 0.1% lows, once again indicating a CPU bottleneck. 
However, all the other cards experience a noticeable uplift, and in the case of the 2080 Super and 1080 Ti are able to achieve a 30fps average frame rate with reasonable 0.1% lows. The 2080 Super actually managed to surpass the 3080 in 0.1% lows and was very close to the 6900 XT, 27.6 to 29.5. The 980 Ti and 1070 are still struggling to achieve 20 FPS average and are once again not playable. In New Atlantis at 1440 high, we notice again a significant improvement from the 4K results, and even an improvement in 0.1% lows unlike what we saw in Jameson's Wilderness. 28.6% for the 6900 XT and 47.5% for 3080 average FPS. Since this area is significantly less graphically intensive, we see the gap lessen substantially between the 6900 XT and 3080, where both had 0.1% lows of about 35 FPS. Moving down to 1080p high, that situation is exacerbated, with both the 6900 XT and 3080 getting marginally lower frame rates across the board. However, the 2080 Super is now able to keep a consistent 30-ish frames per second in this area, and the 1080 Ti is playable too. The 1070 and 980 Ti are still frankly terrible, and I understand why Bethesda rated the minimum as a 1070 Ti. On Jamison, all the cards significantly improved, including the 6900 XT and 3080, with a 3080 on the edge of 30 FPS in the 0.1% lows. The average for the 6900 XT is still much higher at 85 FPS versus 65.9 on the 3080. Unfortunately, the 2080 Super and 1080 Ti start experiencing the closing of the gap we saw on the 3080 and 6900 XT at 1440p, where they converge to 0.1% lows of 24.8 and 24.9 FPS respectively, but both also have significant jumps in average frame rate. The 980 Ti and 1070 both nearly managed to achieve 30 FPS average here, but neither quite make it and are still generally unsuitable for this game. That is, until we turn things down to low at 1080p, where in the Jemison Wilderness we see positive scaling across the board, with the 6900 XT cracking 100 FPS average at 107.8, and the 2080 Super passing 60 at 61.4. One anomaly in this chart is the closer 0.1% lows between the 2080 Super and 6900 XT than the 3080 and 6900 XT, where the 3080 actually falls below the 0.1% low performance of the 2080 Super, like what we saw at 1440p, but is otherwise faster across the board. This is likely due once again to CPU limitations, especially now at a lower resolution and with lower detail settings. The most obvious example of this is seen when we move to New Atlantis at 1080 low, where all the cards converge significantly from what they used to be. At this point, we're up against a clear CPU bottleneck, but it is interesting to see the 2080 Super and 1080 Ti manage much higher frame rates, and in fact, this is the first time the 2080 Super is no longer pinned at 99% GPU usage in New Atlantis. The 980 Ti and 1070 also exhibit playable frame rates at this point. Unless you are desperate to play this game and are willing to drop to 1080p low, we can confidently say that we do not recommend the 980 Ti or GTX 1070, and certainly not a lower end CPU than the 5600X we used here. At 4K, none of the cards we tested were able to crack 60fps average, but the 6900 XT was comfortably over 45 in averages and above 30 in 0.1% lows. The RTX 3080 is only able to achieve such a feat at 1440p, but isn't able to sustain 30fps in all areas. You could make a convincing argument for the 2080 Super and 1080 Ti, since they were both able to deliver a console-like experience at 1440p, and even better than that at 1080p, with the 2080 Super being faster overall. We can confidently say that Starfield is extremely demanding, and the higher end cards like the 6900 XT are only able to stretch their legs at higher resolutions, while lower end ones like the 2080 Super are maxed out until you lower the detail at 1080p. This is evidenced by the wide gap that we experienced between the average frame rate, 1% lows, and 0.1% lows due to reliance on CPU performance. This means that you'll have to tune your settings to find what's optimal for your individual setup, since reducing the resolution or detail settings too far can actually reduce 0.1% lows. Hopefully this video helps you optimize your setup or decide whether this game is worth trying to run on your hardware. Thanks for watching!